Have you ever walked into a shopping mall and discovered that the escalator is not working? And then you find yourself having to use your stupid broken legs to actually climb up the escalator yourself? Well, what does that have to do with the Roll20 basic tutorial? Fuck all. However, there is some sort of hidden connection between the two. In both instances. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get into it. Um, I think we're supposed to... We're supposed to queue on to the next part or something? Yeah, we, we got to do the, the stuff. Uh, you know, the stuff they talked about. The stuff they said. The Roll20 stuff, you know. Number 10 is a shortcut to opening up your character sheet. What you do is simple. You hold the shift button on your keyboard and double click your character's token. This will quickly bring up your character sheet for you. Number nine is another feature that's gonna save you a lot of time and that's clicking and dragging from the compendium. First of all, have your character sheet open onto the character sheet part of your character sheet. Man, I said character sheet a lot just then. It's so stupid. Bed. It's so stupid! And have the compendium open on the right hand side. The compendium can be found by the little information icon in the top right hand corner. Simply search the name of your spell or attack, such as Burning Hands. Once you've found the desired spell or attack, click and drag it onto your character sheet. You can drop it anywhere, it doesn't matter where you drop it, and it will automatically fill out that attack or spell casting for you. This works for equipment and spells, such as a longsword, any armor, and also magic items. It will also automatically create the attack for you, update your armor class or other relevant attributes that is relevant to the acquired piece of equipment. Movement tracking and waypoints are very handy for keeping track of how far your character moves in combat. Simply left click your token and hold on to it. Now without releasing the token let's move it, let's say four squares to the left. Right click once and a yellow line will appear with an arrow showing you how far you've just moved your token. Now right click again and move your token further. You'll see another yellow circle appear now which creates a waypoint. Continue to move your token and right click. It'll set various waypoints for you and finally when you release your token it'll show everyone else the path that you just plotted for your movement as well as how far you just moved. Number seven is your character's features and traits. To add a new feature or trait simply find the features and traits section of your character sheet which can be found in the bottom right hand corner. Click the little plus icon and it will open the feature up for you to fill in. Simply place the name of your feature in the name section then choose the source in which you receive the feature from whether it be your racial feature, a class feature, a feat, a background or another source. Once that's selected, put in the source type. This is great for keeping track of when your character received that certain class feature or racial feature, and it also is clear for the DM to see when you receive that feature as well. This goes for any class feature you obtain, including ability score improvements. You can put in which level you achieve that. For example, if you are a level four fighter, you've just received an ability score improvement. You can put in that you got the ability score improvement as the part of the name. The source would be your class and the source type would be fighter level four. Number five is repeating dice rolls. Just rolled 20d6 plus eight and now you need to type it all out again. Don't worry, there is a very simple way to repeat what you've just rolled with a single button. In the chat box, just hit the up key. Once you have done this, it will bring up the last entry that you placed into the chat box and all you have to do now is hit enter and voila, you are good to go. Number four is how to decipher tokens relative to where they appear in the turn order. If you want to know who is going next, if there are multiple of the same enemy and you can't tell their tokens apart, simply hover over the token in the turn order box and a yellow box will appear signifying which token is linked to that particular initiative count. For these next few we're going to be messing around with some of the features of the Roll20 OGL character sheet and customization options included within to make things easier for the flow of combat. To get exhaustion tracking on your character sheet it's quite simple. Simply click the little cogwheel icon on your character sheet. This will open up the settings. You'll find a series of different boxes here with all sorts of things in them. We're looking for the one on the right hand side. You'll see down the bottom there is show exhaustion tracking you simply just click that to on, go back onto your core section of your character sheet, look towards the center of your character sheet, and you'll now see a new box that has appeared that is called exhaustion level. Simply put in the levels of exhaustion that you have and hope that it's not six. Cause then you're dead. Cause then you're dead. And you will see here, it will show you the debilitating effects of having that exhaustion level. A commonly used rule in Dungeons Dragons 5th edition is that when two creatures have the same initiative order, 
the DM will dictate who gets to go first based on whoever has the highest dexterity score. To have your dexterity score automatically appear when rolling an initiative next to it, we need to activate Add Dex Tiebreaker to Initiative. You can find it by going into your settings through the little cogwheel icon and look for the box top and center of all of these different subsections. See the little checkbox here, Add Dex Tiebreaker to Initiative, simply click it and now you'll find that your dexterity score will be coming up after your initiative separated by a full stop. Now when you roll initiative it'll come up in the turn order and if the DM automatically sorts the turn order by descending order you'll automatically be placed in the correct order if you have a tiebreaker with your initiative with another creature. Altering your attack this is another relatively simple one, but nevertheless it still needs some explaining as Roll20 doesn't really explain any of these features to you simply by using the platform. To make attacks in Roll20 you need to use the attacks and spellcasting subsection of your character sheet. You'll see all of your attacks displayed here. If you added equipment or spells from the earlier tip that I provided, you'll see that some of these sections are already populated. If you want to alter any of these attacks, hover over the attack and a little cogwheel icon will appear on the right hand side near damage and type. Click that and it will open up the attack. You'll see a variety of different subsections here and headings. First of all, you can change the name of the attack and you can choose how the attack roll is made. It will automatically default to strength for melee based attacks and dexterity for range based attacks. And if you want to change it because the feature allows you to, such as a Warlock's Charisma bonus onto their packed weapon, then you can change the ability modifier that will be pulled to use that attack. Then you can add a static bonus such as plus two from a fighter's archery fighting style and of course you can also select if you're proficient with that weapon. Below that you can alter the range, maximum and minimum range is usually separated. Below that you have magic bonus if you're using a plus three weapon then you can put on a plus three here to give yourself a plus three on attacks. Also crit range. Now this number here displayed is the number that you're needed to attain a crit. For example if you are a hexblade and you have someone hexblade cursed then you can actually achieve a critical hit on a 19 or a 20. All you need to do is put the lowest value needed to obtain a critical hit and it will automatically crit for you when achieving that number or higher on a dice roll. For example, if you set the number to 18, then you will automatically have a crit included in your attack if you roll an 18 or higher. The next subsection is damage. You can alter the damage of your weapon. For example, a longbow does 1d8. If you have a weapon that does 1d10, simply type 1d10. It will also add your damage modifier appropriate to your attack. For example, melee attacks will have a damage bonus equal to strength and you can also add any other bonus that you have here such as extra damage from a magical weapon. You can alter the damage type and you can also alter the damage that is appearing when you crit. For example, a barbarian who has brutal critical, you might do an extra 2d12 points of damage as opposed to 1d12 points of damage. You can enter this value here by simply typing 2d12. And you may also have a weapon that does additional damage, such as the Frostbrand that does an additional 1d6 cold damage on a hit. You can also add your second damage type here. If you're filling out a spell, you can make it a saving throw ability instead. If you're doing this, be sure to deselect the attack box to make sure that it doesn't come up as an attack roll when using that spell. The first subsection will show what type of saving throw it is, whether it be a dexterity saving throw, intelligence saving throw, or wisdom saving throw or so on and so forth and the DC in which they have to beat will be pulled from your own spell save DC. You can also show what happens if they make the save as well whether it be taking half damage, no damage or some other debilitating effect. By getting stupid. There's another section here for ammunition tracking which I'm not going to be covering in this video. You can also add any other description that you'd want at the bottom. And the final trick is token actions. For token actions, your DM will actually have to set this up. It's quite simple. In the collection section of Roll20's interface, you'll find the macro subsection. You select a macro or create a new one, open it up and look down the bottom. You'll see a query that says show as token action. Have this selected and another box will appear that says visible to players optional. Now you can choose to have this specific macro available to your players. You may only want a particular player to have access to this macro or all your players. Select the desired players that you want to have access to the macro and click save changes. Now whenever the player has their token selected, a token action will pop up for them with a list of all the available macros that they have activated through the token action. The next one is global modifier fields. Now this one is great for combat if you have bless or some other ability that gives you bonuses on your attack rolls, saving throws or damage or anything else. There are a variety of different global modifiers such as magic attack modifier. There is a variety of global modifier fields. These include 
global save modifier field, global skill modifier field, global attack modifier field, global damage modifier field, and global AC modifier field. You can have all these ones selected and you'll find all the modifier fields come up next to the relevant feature. When you select these modifier fields, there will be the defaults already filled out within them, such as 1d4 to bless, 1d4 to saving throws for bless, 1d4 to attack modifier for bless, and 1d6 for sneak attack for damage, as well as a plus 1 for defense fighting style for AC, and a plus 1d4 for guidance for skill modifier. To change any of these, it's quite simple. First of all, write the desired dice roll that you want added on to the feature, such as 1d4 for bless. Then, in square brackets, add the name of the feature, such as bless, close the brackets off, and click the little cog icon that appears next to it to close it up. There you'll have it now. You're able to select and unselect the global modifier field to add it on to the specific feature. Now, if someone casts bless on you, all you have to do is simply click the little box, and when you make your attack, it will automatically roll the desired dice for you, such as 1d4 for bless, and come up as a bonus, which you can also hover over and figure out where the source comes from in the attack box. Hope you guys found that tutorial helpful, and if you you want to check out any of my other videos I'll leave a video here that will explain to you how to actually create sound effects for your macros so you can do all sorts of cool Hollywood style explosions and stuff when you use your spells also if you could please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already that would be awesome I'm still trying to get videos monetized I need a thousand subscribers for that thank you guys very much I'll see you soon